Welcome back to this daily special taking a look at the Producers Guild nominees. Helen Mirren's performance in The Queen received a five minute standing ovation when the movie premiered at the Venice Film Festival in Italy. The actress took home the Golden Globe for her portrayal as Queen Elizabeth II and the movie got the Globe for Best Screenplay. It's been one of the best reviewed movies of the year. Impressive for being based on a very private family. Like me to place those for you? No. Oh. These are for you. For me. Thank you. Thank you very much. The idea for the Queen seems such a big idea. It seems such a, a natural one for a movie because, in a sense, you're dealing with such a, a global brand without. Sounding silly, but you know everybody knows who the Queen is. Right. And uh, once we sort of matched Helen Mirren as, as the monarch, it just seemed to me, if we got it right, uh, you know, it would, it would really interest people. Basically, I thought, you know, I, I knew it would be a big success on TV. I mean, the, my television company wanted it just for telly because, of course, it would rate really well. But I felt sure that if we got it right, um, that it would do well as a movie, which amazingly it has. It has done very well. Yes. Have we shown you how to start a nuclear war yet? Uh, no. Oh, first thing we do, apparently. Then we take away your passport and spend the rest of the time sending you around the world. The idea started because I work with Helen Mirren a lot, and I do this Prime Suspect series for right. British television. And it was, I, was, I, was at the, um, I was at a read-through, actually, of Prime Suspect, and I was just watching how people react, interact with Helen, and because she's you know, a dame and because she's very, very well-known in the UK and obviously is a wonderful actress, people sort of slightly genuflect her, you know, they kind of slightly... Mm -hmm. Bow, and I thought, gosh, that's extraordinary. You know, she's very regal. She's like a queen. I'm sorry to disturb, but it's the Princess of Wales. Why? What's she done now? Diana, Princess of Wales, has died after a car crash in Paris. It became clear that the, the best subject matter was probably somehow something to do with Diana. You know, that was the great change of the royal family. Once Diana came in, the royal family was very threatened, very shaken, fundamentally changed. Was it difficult doing the research on this movie about a family that while it is very famous, is not particularly, you don't really know what the inner workings are of the family. Well, that's a very good question. I mean, the, the, the answer is, it, it wasn't, it wasn't. We knew that we wouldn't get access to the real inner, inner circle. No lawyer is going to come and talk to us. But it is a, a, a leaky old business. And, and what you forget, for example, is that there are three palaces involved in this particular case. There was Buckingham Palace, where the Queen obviously exists. There was Kensington Palace, which, where Diana had her own court. And there was St. James's Palace, where... Um, uh, Prince Charles had his court. I mean, it sounds a bit old-fashioned to be talking about courts and things like that, but that is really how it is. And all these courts have their own press officers and their teams, and their teams are people who have worked with these people for a long, long time. And, of course, they come and they go, people. So one person leads to another. Once we got into that trail of people who wanted to talk to us, um, it wasn't so hard to build up a picture of how it was. But there were often different versions. So in a sense, what the film did was to steer, what Peter did, actually, in the script, was steer a view through the view of the film, in a sense, is his view, our view, if you like. It's a, it's a take on the royal family. I mean, how it's as real as we can make it. I mean, there's not one line in it that, of course, is factually correct. How could we know what the Queen was thinking? But um, we believe that it's, it's got very near to a truth, a truth, not perhaps the truth, but a truth about how they reacted. No member of the royal family will speak publicly about this. This is a private matter. And that animosity, which I didn't realize there was that much animosity between the, the Queen and, and Diana, was, is that, that's pretty factual? Yes, I mean, that's uh, absolutely what you guys true. No, absolutely true. I think it probably, to be honest with you, if there's anything, I think it was more, it was more in real life really? than, than we depicted in the film. Yeah. And that's why you think that her reaction was so late in coming, was because this was someone that she genuinely didn't like? I think she probably didn't like her, but I think more than that, the Queen, I think, had felt that what Diana had done had seriously undermined the monarchy. Hmm. And, you know, the, the, for the Queen, the monarchy is everything. That is what she is born to do. That's what she believes she is born to do. She's on this earth to be the reigning monarch. It is my belief that they will any moment reject this, this mood, which is being stirred up by the press, in favor of a period of restrained grief and sober private mourning. That's the way we do things in this country, quietly, with dignity. 